Grace Luanga channel for free meteorology and navigation instruments lessons. Welcome, my esteemed viewers. Welcome to lesson five of airplane navigation instruments, a program run by Grace Luanga YouTube channel. Grace Luanga. For those watching for the first time, my name is Grace Luanga and my profile has already been given in lesson one presentation. As a reminder, in lesson four, we looked at altimeter and pressure datum, a subtopic of instruments topic. Airspeed indicator and design. I am delighted, therefore, to discuss with you today another topic from the same subtopic. Our topic today is called Airspeed indicator and design. By design, I don't mean a fashion design, but I refer to the internal mechanism used by the airspeed indicator to detect and process the input data. The airspeed indicator, or ASI, can be thought of as an airtight box or instrument case into which the static air pressure is fed. Diagrammatically, the instrument is shown here and on our diagram we will call the static pressure S. Inside the instrument case is a thin walled metal capsule which is capable of expansion and contraction. Pito pressure is fed into this capsule and we can see this capsule represented here in blue. We will call the pito pressure dy plus S. The pressure inside the metal capsule will therefore consist of static pressure plus dynamic pressure, whereas the pressure inside the instrument case will consist only of static pressure. As the static pressures inside both the instrument case and the metal capsule are equal, any expansion or contraction of the metal capsule will be due to the presence of dynamic pressure only, as the static pressures cancel each other out. Expansion or contraction of the metal capsule will therefore be related to the changes in the dynamic pressure produced by changes in airspeed. Click on Increase Airspeed or Decrease Airspeed to see the principle in operation. Introduction Airspeed indicator and design is one of the most ingenious sub-items in the airspeed indicator item because this little instrument took more than 50 years for the pioneers to airworthy accomplish it. In meteorology, the airspeed indicator properties are similar to those of the anemometer. Therefore, I believe that this lesson 5 will be beneficial to all of us. Uh, help keep the firefighters informed of uh you know how the winds and the weather are going to be changing so they don't get surprised and caught off guard help keep them safe behind us is um, a 
remote uh, automated weather station, call, also called a ROS. Uh, we use these to get uh, current weather conditions on, uh, on a fire. This right here is actually a uh, radiometer. It measures the amount of radiation we're getting from the sun. This is for measuring the wind direction, and this is the wind speed. We call that an anemometer. Objectives of the lesson. By the end of the lesson five, the viewer will be able to explain the following ASI terms by meteorological examples where possible. Indicated airspeed, IAS, true airspeed, TAS, calibrated airspeed, CAS, low true airspeed, high true air, airspeed, equivalent airspeed, EAS, rectified airspeed, RAS, blockage error, Compressibility error, instrument error, pressure or position error, maneuver induced error, dynamic pressure, pitot pressure, static pressure, and pioneers of the airspeed indicator and design science. Definitions We will begin by defining dynamic pressure pitot pressure and static pressure. Details of the definitions. The difference between the static pressure and the pitot pressure is the kinetic energy called dynamic pressure. In meteorology, static pressure is called potential energy. The ASI principle, therefore, is a finite integral of the dynamic pressure between the limits period pressure and static pressure. Well, first of all, let's see how the airspeed indicator works from the inside out and name its parts. Starting from the outside, the airspeed indicator is connected to the pitot tube and drain hull, which feed impact air to the diaphragm, and to the static port, which feeds the outside pressure to the chamber of the instrument. We will see later in detail why it is important to do this. The diaphragm, in turn, is connected through levers to the sector, which is connected to the hand taft pinion. Applications of the airspeed indicator. The airspeed indicator, ASI, is accurate for aircraft speeds equal to or less than 300 knots. In this speed range, called the low TAS, the atmosphere is treated like an incompressible medium. Above the 300 knots range, called the high TAS, the Mach meter is instead used for measuring the aircraft speed. In order to do this, a Mach meter has a slightly modified design compared to ASI. The purpose of the Mach meter is to display the aircraft's true airspeed, or TAS, as a proportion or ratio of the local speed of sound. So let us now look at the Mach meter, starting with the principle of its operation. Although we know that the local speed of sound depends on temperature, it can also be shown mathematically that the Mach number is derived from dynamic pressure divided by static pressure. So the Mach meter is required to sense dynamic pressure and also static pressure. If we look at the cutaway illustration of a Mach meter, we can see how this is achieved. Static pressure is fed into the instrument case. 
while an airspeed capsule inside the instrument case is fed with pitot pressure. Expansion or contraction of the airspeed capsule will therefore give us dynamic pressure and movement of the airspeed capsule is transmitted by the airspeed link and the main shaft to move the ratio arm in the direction AB. An altitude capsule is also incorporated within the instrument case. This is a sealed capsule which will expand or contract as the static pressure inside the instrument case changes. Movement of the altitude capsule will move the ratio arm in the direction of CD. A spring-loaded ranging arm transmits the movement of the ratio arm to the pointer mechanism. We can see, therefore, that movement of the pointer results from the interrelationship of the pressures sensed by both the airspeed capsule and the altitude capsule. And we can see that the sequence of the linkage movement is that the ratio arm moves the ranging arm, which in turn moves the pointer on the dial. Blockage error. The ASI suffers several errors. The most significant one is the blockage error. Knowing and understanding how an airspeed indicator reads during a blockage is critical for safety. Since the ASI principle is a finite integral of the dynamic pressure between the limits, pitot pressure and static pressure, blockage error can be explained as follows. When pitot gets blocked, ASI underreads. When static gets blocked, ASI overreads. When pitot and static get blocked, ASI remains neutral. It all began on May the 31st, 2009. Shortly after 2200 hours UTC, universal time, the time standard used in aviation, Air France Flight 447 took off from Rio de Janeiro, heading for Paris Charles de Gaulle Airport. It was an Airbus A330-200 series, carrying 228 people, or souls, as they say in the industry, 216 passengers, 12 crew members. Four hours into its 11-hour journey, things started to go wrong. At 0200, the plane entered a thunderstorm with strong turbulence, and the pilots made a short course correction to avoid the bad weather. Then a problem with the plane's pitot tubes, the small probes that are used to measure the speed of the aeroplane. It's believed they got clogged with supercooled ice. The speed sensors iced over. In the cockpit, the computers behaved as they were supposed to. The autopilot disengaged. The plane's co-pilot, who was the pilot flying, reacted by pulling back on the side stick and the plane started to climb. Within a minute, the plane had climbed to 38,000 feet and was outside its certified parameters. There was a stall warning as the plane's airspeed dropped dramatically and the plane fell out of the sky, falling at nearly 11,000 feet a minute. As the earlier reports make clear, over the next three and a half minutes, there was confusion in the cockpit as the pilots tried and failed to regain control of the aircraft. So far, in the early reports, the accident investigators from France have been focusing on a series of sustained mistakes by at least one of the pilots. Finally, after falling 38,000 feet, unable to regain control, the plane plunged into the sea and sank to the ocean floor. Days later, crews found wreckage in the equatorial waters between Brazil and Africa, 570 miles northeast of Natal, Brazil. It would be two years and several searches later before the so-called black box, the flight data recorder and the cockpit voice recorders would be recovered. Now, more than three years later, the final report is to be published. The investigators 
will not apportion blame to the crew or the plane or the equipment. What they will do is tell us what went wrong. Richard Quest, CNN, London. Pioneers of the airspeed indicator and design science. In 1732, a French hydraulic engineer, Henry Pitot, 1695 to 1771, invented the Pitot tube, which is today used for the design of the ASI. In the mid-19th century, a French scientist Henry Darcy, 1803-1858, modified the pitot tube to its modern form. In 1940, Leo N. Schoen, a Caltech graduate, patented the airspeed indicator. Number 10. Marseille One of Europe's oldest cities and France's second largest city, Marseille is a major Mediterranean seaport located off the southeast coast of France. Boasting an idyllic climate, Roman ruins, and medieval architecture, Marseille is also a working city with several universities and industries. At the core of Marseille is its old port. Dominated by two historic forts, this bustling harbor is lined with waterfront cafes, shops, and bars. One of Marseille's best natural attractions, the Calanque, are a series of small inlets with astonishing blue water and majestic limestone cliffs. Number 9. Lyon The third largest city in the country, Lyon, is located where the Rhône and Saône rivers join. Its strategic location has enabled it to attract merchants to the city ever since it was founded by the Romans in 43 BC. An orderly and sophisticated place, Renaissance buildings dot its streets. Lyon seamlessly mixes the new with the old, with a rich cultural heritage that encompasses gastronomic delights and a fine architecture. Lyon Cathedral is one of the most impressive sights, and the old town is lovely to walk around. Make sure to try some of the sumptuous cuisine before you continue on your way. Number 8. Strasbourg Capital of Alsace, Strasbourg has a stunning historical center and occupies a strategic setting on the west bank of the Rhône. Consequently, it has been fought over by France and Germany throughout its long history. Now, however, the glassy European Union buildings glitter in the sun and, along with the teeming student body, help to give a modern air to this ancient city. The Gothic cathedral is simply stunning to behold, as is the delightful La Petite France that is home to the old part of town. Number 7. Loire Valley about a two hours drive south of Paris, the Loire Valley is a region regarded for its spectacular scenery, picturesque vineyards, and historic villages. The valley's biggest attraction is its large number of chateaus scattered throughout the rolling green hills. 
Ranging from grand country manors to defense fortresses and luxurious palaces, these chateaus were built by French nobility. The valley is also home to many wineries that offer tours and wine tastings. Number 6. Bordeaux Straddling the banks of the Garonne River, Bordeaux is a large city with a lot to offer. Its impressive old town is delightful to walk around, and the architecture on show is ravishing. Surrounding Place de la Bourse, you can find the 18th century mansions rubbing shoulders with decadent palaces, as well as a number of great art museums. At night, the view of the city lights from the Napoleonic era Pont de Pierre is magical. Home to some of the best wines in the world, make sure to give them a taste before you head off. Number 5. Cannes Up until the 19th century, Cannes was just a quiet fishing village, but today it is a glamorous seaside city made world famous by the annual Cannes Film Festival. Every May, when Cannes hosts the film festival, hordes of fans flock to see the rich and famous in person as the celebrities walk the red carpet up the steps of the Palais des Festivals, where thousands of films are screened. Leading up to the Palais des Festivals is the beautiful waterfront promenade that is lined with palm trees, upscale hotels, restaurants, and designer shops like Gucci, Chanel, and Dior. Number 4. Mont Saint-Michel Rising up from the midst of vast mudflats is the rocky island of Mont Saint-Michel, located off of France's northwestern coast in Normandy. The medieval structures on the island are built as if stacked upon one another and crowned with the star attraction, the Abbey of Mont Saint-Michel. The awe-inspiring abbey was built by devoted monks in 708 AD after the Bishop of Avranche was allegedly visited by the Archangel Michael. The bay around Mont Saint-Michel is famed for having Europe's highest tidal variations. Number 3. Dordogne Unless you have weeks or months to spend in this scenic Dordogne region of southwestern France, you're going to pick and choose the things you want to see. There is just so much to see and do here, beginning with picture postcard villages and chateaux, including the well-preserved Chateau de Benac, a hilltop castle. The scenery is pretty awesome too, with the Dordogne River running through it. The Dordogne also has some of the best prehistoric cave art in France. Number 2. Nice Located on the French Riviera, Nice is constantly bathed in sunshine. As the fifth largest city in France, it has a vibrant mix of cultures. During the day, travelers can enjoy a stroll through its historic center or find a place along Nice's pebbly beaches to take in the beauty of the Mediterranean Sea. Walking along the famous Promenade des Anglais and gazing out over the turquoise waters is simply heavenly. A charming place to spend some time, Nice has something for everyone, as it combines city life with a beautiful setting. Number 1. Paris Attracting more than 45 million visitors annually, Paris is the world's most popular tourist destination. Situated on the banks of La Seine, the elegant and stylish capital of France is a romantic place with lovely boulevards, beautiful buildings, and sights like the Eiffel Tower and the Notre Dame Cathedral rising towards the heavens. From the stunning art collections at the Louvre to the eerie catacombs beneath the streets and the breathtaking Notre Dame Cathedral, you could spend a lifetime getting to know all of Paris's wonderful sights. Time. Viewers, because of time, the general aspirin indicator and design theory cannot be fully covered here, but it is available in a book, Meteorology for Airplane Navigation Instruments by Grace Ruanga. Many thanks to all of you who have shared your video and uh, sound clips with me in order to make the lesson a success. Meanwhile, if you have any message, you can send me an email or SMS. I am always available 24-7. Subscribe and benefit more from our channel as I look forward to meeting you. I beg to stop here. Thank you very much for watching me and God bless you. 
Hello everyone and welcome back to Military Aviation History. I'm standing in front of a MiG-21. This is a Soviet uh, jet fighter from the Cold War era. However, this one has Finnish markings because in the 1960s, early 1960s, uh, these aircraft were sold to Finland. Now the question I often get with this aircraft is what is that enormous lands kind uh, looking device up front? Uh, this is a pitot and it essentially allows the pilot to read the aircraft speed. So the pitot, like I call it for some reason. Now there are different models of pitot tubes for different... But the question is, why is it so far out? And why do you see this in quite a few jets that they have these pitots that are just enormous? This is because at the speed that these guys are going, you really need to have uh, the, the pitot as far away from uh, the actual aircraft fuselage. What happens if, you, if you're going subsonic yeah, is you build up a pressure field that is around and especially in front of your aircraft. And this pressure field causes all kinds of problems to accurate speed reading, especially at high angles of attack and with aircraft that have a high wing loading. And yes, the MiG-21 has a high wing loading. Um, with the pitot having to go into, a, into the flow direction, you can see how how um, that is a problem, especially the closer it is to the uh, aircraft, the higher the angle of attack, the more bleak the angle it will be. So with a long pitot, you can get around this because it, re it reaches relatively far outside this kind of pressure field that is being built up. And this allows the pilot to get a more accurate speed reading and also um, that the aircraft has to get less compensation factors, in has to take less compensation factors into account. So there you go, that's why you sometimes see this kind of lance looking device on uh, fighter jets. And I hope you guys learned something um, here. This aircraft, you can visit it at the Finnish Aviation Museum. Uh, thanks very much for them for letting me film this and a couple of other episodes. Uh, if you enjoy this kind of content, please consider supporting it so I can make more of this, uh, this kind of stuff. Uh, you find all the links in the description below to my Patreon for that. Um, anyway, I will leave you with a nice little look of a Finnish. Big 21. It's quite a late war. Oh, one, one more thing I want to tell you guys. When the MiG-21 started out, the lance was below the engine coming out on the bottom and then they moved it up top in, one, in the later models. Anyway, it's just a little bit of trivia for you. So yeah, as always guys, have a great day, good hunting and see you in the sky.